Hi guys! So today's video is going to be about things that I have learned, very important things that I've learned at 24. So I'm not 24 yet, but I am turning 24 in 15 days. 20 days. 25 days. No. 28 days. <laughs> um, which is basically like very short time. I'm not gonna lie to you, I think that when I think in society, just like when you age or when you turn a year older, it's always there's always this weird expectation of the things that you are supposed to accomplish about certain goals that you've had in mind. And because there's a societal pressure that comes with that, that you're supposed to have it all figured out. And I really wanted to come on here and truly express and share about how really transformative it is to look at your life, not from the eyes of what has been fed to you your entire life, not from the eyes of the people around you, not from the eyes of what anybody around you has to say, not from anybody's perspective or what society deems normal or what society the what society has constructed the path that you have seen everybody else take i want this video to be for anyone who might feel certain pressure that comes with aging the certain pressure that comes with growing a year older i know that i found myself in that same space i'm gonna say a year ago for me birthdays were always very chaotic they were always like i know that there's people who enjoy birthdays <laughs> there's people who um like celebrate their birthdays and they have so much i was always the kind of person where i didn't like birthdays i didn't like celebrating birthdays because i felt that every single year that went by I, I didn't feel like oh like it's a celebration <laughs> you know I didn't feel that that joy I would always get pretty like weird around birthdays and for some reason this year I'm actually incredibly incredibly grateful for the transformative year that it has been and um, for me I think when when I learn when I just see the way that I think things play out, sometimes we, we can look at success in the world's eyes as being successful means that you have a lot to show materially, that you um, have a million dollars or that you own a certain amount of properties or that you have all of these things, you've acquired all these things, that you have a certain position, a certain job and a certain, a certain title. Can I just tell you that if you build your life upon that, if you build your life and you build your identity upon that, guess what? You will never be fulfilled. And I hate to break it to you, and maybe what I say doesn't really matter that much, but I can tell you, and you know it deep within, that if you strive towards becoming fulfilled because of something specific. I mean, we all seek fulfillment. We all want fulfillment. We all want bigger things in our lives. We all have goals and that's when we live, right? That's why we, we do what we do. But the problem is that what I've seen, the flaw, the deep flaw in the structure of our society and, and the world that we're living in, is that so many people are deeply dissatisfied and nobody admits it. Either we admit it and we just try to numb it and distract ourselves and just go back to it and we get lost in the cycle again, or we don't talk about it and we hide it and we pretend and we fake it, right? And so the point of this is, is that what I really truly learned with age is that either you're going to live your life on the timeline of what of, of culture of what's culturally popular of the way culture tells you you should live of the way your family tells you, you should live on the way your parents tell you, you should live on the way your friends tell you, you should live or you're gonna live life on God's clock 
And God's clock is usually counter-cultural and counter-intuitive. What does that mean? God's timing is not your timing. God's timing is not culture's timing. And God's timing is not mainstream media's timing either. If you were supposed to graduate at a certain age, guess what? That's not God's timing. I think that so many people are living with regret. And this is why I wanted to record this. I feel like there's so many people who think that when it comes to, to a certain age, and this was me a year ago, and that shows what God is doing, what God is really working is removing these fears and these hindrances and these blockages and these, these mental um, roadblocks that we, we let society, we let the world, we let the way of the world, the way that the world thinks dictate the way that we see ourselves, the way that we feel about ourselves. We think that if we don't achieve this certain thing at a certain time, at a certain age, that we are not enough. <laughs> and that's the lie. That's the lie. And you're never going to know who you are until you don't give your soul and you give your mind to God. Because he's the one who's going to tell you who you are. He's the one who's going to tell you your purpose. He's the one who's going to tell you, I got you. Everything is working according to my timing, for I know the plans that I have for you. It's to give you a future. It's to prosper you. It's to give you hope. It may not be working out the way you want it to work out in this moment, but it's working out exactly the way I planned it. And exactly where you are is exactly the place where you're supposed to be. And I know that you want to be somewhere else. Most of our dissatisfaction comes from us not wanting to be where we are right now. It's, it comes from us comparing ourselves with other people. It comes from us saying, we're not su successful because we don't have this. We're not successful because we don't have what other people, what other people have. Because, because we are constantly comparing ourselves to the way that the world works. To the way the world tells you that you should be. But what I have learned every single year that has passed by is that I look back. And I remember when I was in a certain place that I did not want to be in. And I would say, God, take me out of this place that I'm in. Take me out of this depression. Take me out of this hell that I'm going through. Take me out of this obesity. Take me out of this pain that I'm going through. I don't want to go through this. Why are you allowing me this? Have you abandoned me, God? Have you abandoned me? Have you removed your hand? Are your promises never going to come into fruition? Do, do you not hear my prayers? Why are you allowing me to stay in this pit? And guess what? Years go by because the process of God is not a month process. It's not a two-month process. It could be maybe the season will be short where he's going to leave you in a certain place for a certain time. But sometimes it will be years that God will take you through the wilderness, that God will take you through a road, the road less traveled. He will take you through the road that other people are not taking in order to enlighten you, in order to pour into you, in order to transform your mind, in order to make you unlike everybody else. He, he needs to put you out of, he needs to put you, you're going to be a, you're going to be a weirdo. You think that the, the disciples that walked with Jesus, they were like normal to everybody else? No, everyone else was like, what's wrong with them? Why? Because they walked with the king of kings. So now that they, now they have a new perspective. Now they see things differently. They don't see things like the world sees them. They see it with a higher state of mind. There's a higher revelation that comes from walking with God, from walking the will of God. The will of God is uncomfortable. The will of God does not feel good. The will of God does not feel good. It feels painful. You don't like it. You're stuck in that pit. Joseph is stuck in that prison. And he says, I don't like this. Why do you have me in prison? I don't understand. What did I do wrong? Why am I here in pain, isolated, suffering? Did he know that two years later he was going to be crowned? That that was the preparation season that God had him in in order for him to be king? Did he know that he was being tested by God to see if he would stay faithful, to see if his heart would still, would still remain in love with God the way he was from the beginning? He didn't let the trials and the tribulations stain his heart because that's what the enemy does. He puts, situation, he puts situations in your lives. He puts circumstances in order to see, oh, do you really love God? Do you really still trust him? Or, or are you going to let those situations 
bitter you. You're going to let them bitter you. You're going to let them break you. You're going to let them cause all this trauma. Everybody walking around with trauma. And nobody's ready to face it. It's just trauma, trauma, trauma replaying itself over and over. You're projecting it over every single person. You're not, we don't even see people for who they really are. We see them through the lens of our own trauma. I'm not talking about fun stuff here. Sometimes the breakthrough we need is through tough conversations. And I'm never going to stop talking about these things. <laughs> I know that, listen, when the Holy Spirit flows, it's like, we're making people uncomfortable here. Like, I ain't trying to tickle your ear. But that's the reality of things. And we can numb ourselves on all we want. We could distract ourselves all we want. But the only breakthrough, the only true breakthrough that you're going to get is when you face when you face it, when you face yourself, when you sit there and you ask God and, and it's and it, 30 days have gone by and you still haven't gotten an answer. It's not an easy road. But the breakthrough that you get from the, the sacrifice, from the constant seeking, from having patience, from letting the, his patience work through you, you will get the answers that you want. You will get the answers that your soul needs. But it's not going to be in a day the breakthrough will not happen in a day but anyway the point of this is i was trying i really didn't want to go on too long because i actually <laughs> was gonna do a little skincare routine video and a hair video but um truly if anybody watches this video i want to keep it short please do not compare your timing do not compare your life to another person's life there is great things in store for you but every single person you need to give your timeline to god and i am telling you this even if you're not but not a believer i'm gonna be honest with you i don't know what i would do like you need to give your timeline to god because if not if you carry the weight of the frustrations if you carry the weight of your frustrations of your pain of of your past trauma of the things that didn't go right in your life of your failed businesses if you carry that around with you your entire life you know what's gonna happen you're gonna be walking around just projecting everywhere, projecting your insecurities on everybody. You're never gonna try at anything again because you're just gonna be constantly repeating the past failures in your head because you're carrying that with you every single place that you go to. God wants to bring something new into your life, but you still haven't let go of the, of the past things that happened. You're still carrying them on your shoulder. You're still carrying the weight of, of the world. You're still carrying, oh, but this didn't work out last year, so why should I try again? Oh, but, but this I didn't graduate on time so I'm not gonna try to go to school again or my family didn't go to college so I'm not gonna go to college and I don't have the money and it's not worth it and I'm too old and I'm too this and I'm too stu how are you <laughs> I'm just rambling here but to wrap it up you're never going to receive the new thing that God has for you if you're not willing to let go and give the past to him you need to understand and i have seen it i have seen it in my life and listen i know i'm being like very passionate right now and i have all these like facial expressions <laughs> everything works in your favor the painful situations when i look back at the times that i was in the pit and i was like i cannot like why 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 did god leave me here i, I stand here today to say that i am grateful I am grateful to God for every depressing, negative, crushing, painful experience. Because that is what builds spiritual maturity. Either it will break you and it will make you bitter or it will make you. Listen to me. Either the pain will break you and crush you and stumble you and it will create you into a walking zombie. Or the pain is going to make you great. The pain will be your power. You either use it for your for the power that it was intended. God allows the pain in order to, to crush you. But spiritually crushing, the, the crushing, and this is something T.D. Jake speaks about, is that what happens, how is wine created? It's through the grapes being crushed. I mean, God wants to bring out that powerful warrior, that character that comes with spiritual maturity, that only comes through suffering, through trials, through tribulations. Do you not see sometimes these people who had it very easy in life? They don't have any personality. 
there is nothing more, at least to me, more like a turn off, <laughs> let's say, than somebody who doesn't have soul. I can't have a conversation with somebody like that, personally. But when you see somebody who's been through things, who's had trials, who's had through tribulations, who has a story to tell, there is nothing more beautiful than meeting somebody who has a story, than meeting somebody who has the motivational speakers, the powerful, great people on this earth that have walked this earth, have all had to go through trials and tribulations. There is no person that is great, that has a great name. I was just watching Kanye's story. I'm, bro, obsessed with Kanye. He worked his butt off. And he has, he, ha he has a powerful story. Every single person that you see that has became somebody has had a story. Because that's the way that you impact. That is the way God uses in order to influence the masses, in order to influence the nations, in order to turn that pain into your power, in order to propel you into your purpose. So you need to understand that everything that's ever happened in your past is being used for you, not against you. And those are the things I've learned at 24. <laughs> I feel like an eight-year-old. Um, with all of this information and <laughs> mental mental stuff, um, just a lot of information. But um, yeah, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed that message. Went on a little bit longer than usual, but I'm gonna be posting this video to YouTube um, because I just started a YouTube channel and I'm really excited to get it going again. Um, but catch the replay if you wanted to see it. I just finished talking right now. Um, but thank you guys for joining in. Have an amazing, amazing night and stay blessed. Bye.